Sport it up, no? Sport it up, Mr. Phillips! Not bad for a Friday for surgery, is it? You know, are you prepared for Christmas, please? Yes. yes. How many is going to be three sets? Because I think I'm going to put my three up earlier this year and go completely against everything I've done in the past because I think I need a bit of cheering up two in the house as well. So how's it going to put their feet? Who's putting them up this weekend? I think I'm going to put it up this weekend. So it be a well then, okay. So we're into that sort of festive. It's that funny time of year where we come with children in need, the adverts are on, but we're not quite there yet. Okay, which sort of brings us to uh, our sort of a theme, our tolerance theme. Theme is that we want something, but we can't yet get it. So it's that sort of we're just going to wait for the tolerance, and then we can enjoy the festivities in the next week or so. Because there's a big plan coming out of what we're doing over Christmas over the next few weeks, which will teach us and tell me what's going on in the classes. Because it's going to look a bit different. It's going to be a bit different. Okay, and every class is going to have a Christmas tree delivered. They've arrived. That's where it's leading to, Mr. Richards. They've arrived. It's leading to, and we're going down. Every class has got, but they're all different colours. And we're going to bring them all into the hall. And I want to, we have a bit of a Christmas tree competition there. But you can't, you've got to make all your own decorations. So they'll all be made by you. Yes! I'll give you some twinkly lights. But you've got to make them. What do you think of that? Okay. So let's have a, a good sing. Okay, no shouting, but good singing. Mr. Zach Hughes, it's all about your core muscles. Tell me, eh? I gotta practice it because my core muscles aren't great. And a bit like that. Oh, Tummy's in, back shoulders back, big smile, let's sing. Off to go. I think there is a theme going on this week. Perhaps you can tell me. 
What we've done in assembly this week with me, then, children. Tell us uh, what we've done in our assembly. And that assembly is now on YouTube to watch. Lots of you doing voiceovers in Year 6. Fantastic, so what they wrote in their treasuries yesterday on this. And? We're hand in hand, really. Hand in hand. You know, we don't have to be massive friends, but we can be friendly. What's another theme that was going on? Go on, Mr. Richards, you can choose now. Go on then, Alex. Article 19, mental health. Yeah, we touched on Article 19. That's right, we did. And we did that last week and this week. And I mentioned that in the Assembly. What was the key word we did in our Assembly? And you did voiceovers yesterday. Go on then, Eva. Uh, tolerance. Tolerance and intolerance. So we talked about tolerating difference. And some of the things that all the children came up with were absolutely incredible. Big word, that really, it's all been together, tolerate, well, tolerating each other. Sometimes we just cannot, sometimes we get five other people annoying. I do too. But we have to show tolerance because we can't get cross or angry. Use that mouth, do it with our mouth, fist, feet. We don't be tolerant, we have to be accepted. There are differences, we're all different, thank goodness. You wouldn't all want to be like me. No, no. There we are. Sir, one day I aim to be like you. You are, you are my goal. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Art, lovely to see you all. It's been a long time since I've been in the halls of assembly, and it's been a long time since I spoke to you in year six. So today I'm here to tell you about the celebration. You might have seen some things to do with this on social media this morning, or if you watch the news round. Today is World Children's Day. And if you remember, some of you might, last year we were celebrating 30 years of the UNCRC. We had balloons around the school, kept Laura and Maisie very busy because they were part of our Richard Learning Council and they were out in the yard promoting rights and telling parents all about your rights as well. They did lots of important work. So today we're going to talk a bit about World Children's Day. And I'm going to be a bit like Boris Johnson now and say, next slide to Miss Vanagas. All right, so today is a day for us to reimagine what you want your future to look like. What do you want to see the world when you grow up? How do you want to see our world? And today is also an opportunity to celebrate our work on children's rights so far. It's a day to celebrate all our hard work over the past year. And we have been working hard. So today, I'm going to show you. We've proudly achieved our Bronze Rights Respect in School Award. And you will see, if you walk past our foyer, you will see our certificate proudly displayed. And as most of you know, we are now working hard towards our Silver Award. So, let's have a little chat about our journey so far. If you've got any new children and any new staff watching, then they'll be able to see what we've been doing. So, to achieve our Bronze Award, what we needed first of all is we needed to know about children's rights. What are they? And I think we've done a really good job because you can see the photo right at the top. Two years ago, I took children from each class all the way from Year 1 to Year 6 and I asked them to fill in a little survey. And we found out that there's no, there were no children in the school that knew about children's rights. I think we're not too tick the box, yes, but when I asked them if they knew about them, they couldn't tell me, so I think they were just ticking the wrong box. So nobody in our school two years ago knew about children's rights. And I've got to say, I didn't know very much either. This has been a journey for me. I've been learning with you as we go along. So to start with, we put up these posters. The Learning Council decided we would work towards the award, and they took a poster, and they decided where they were going to put it in their class. They give one to the teacher, and they said, where can we put it so that all children can see? So, what is the UNCRC? Let's remind ourselves. Every child in the world under 18 has these rights. They are written in the UNCRC, the United Nations Convention for the Rights of the Child. Now, that's a lot of words. But basically, it means all the countries in the world came together and created an agreement of the list of things that they thought children needed to be happy, healthy, and safe. 
And for the children in the classrooms, we'll show you a little video at the end we link to. So this agreement then talks about things that all the governments in the world should be putting in place to keep you happy, healthy and safe. So as you can see, it be very important to you. We skip the video, Miss, and I'll put it on at the end and then the other children uh, can see. So how have adults and children in literature been learning about their rights? There's some photos up here to remind ourselves. So we started off with meetings with our Literature Learning Council. And the first thing we did was we decided what rights did we think were important. And we made a list. And with that list, I remember Lauren with her beautiful handwriting sent a letter out to all the teachers in the school and the governors saying what rights we thought were important to Lichard and explaining how teachers and governors are responsible for helping make decisions and helping you get those rights. You can see this photos there from our celebration last year, the big 30 balloons. So we invited parents in because we could then. Unfortunately, we can't this year. But we had parents up in the yard. It was a windy day, so our leaflets were blowing everywhere. But the children were out there busy telling parents about the rights that you've got. We've got the photo of Dion at the top. We had Art Girl of the Month every month, as we're continuing to do now. And every month, your teachers and I would talk to you in assembly and explain the importance of those rights. We had our learning council go out to groups around in the community and help teach them because while they were teaching other children about their rights, they were also learning a bit more about them themselves. So they went to a local scout group, we had uh, learning council members go to stagecoach classes and teach the children there all about their rights. We've also done lots of working classes, every class we've been doing work on those rights as well. Right. This is A, B, C, D, E of children's rights. And my poster is a bit boring. So I'll put this up on Hub for you. And if anybody over the weekend, I think it's going to be a rainy, miserable weekend, if anybody would like to make that a bit brighter for me, write it out, and perhaps we can display your posters instead of mine around the school. But basically, every child living in Wales needs to know these things. All children have rights. So everybody sitting here today, the agreement on that piece of paper applies to all of you. You all have rights. Birth is when your rights begin. Okay, so we call that inherent. It's quite a big word, inherent, it means that as soon as you're born, you get those rights. We come to see they cannot be taken away from you. Even if you do something wrong, even if you... Um, uh, stop somebody else getting their rights by not protecting them from harm or not being very tolerant of them. You still have those rights. They cannot be taken away from you. You do not have to earn your rights. You don't suddenly get to get these rights if you do something as well. You get them automatically. We call that unconditional. And every right, and I might be spoiling some of the teachers' lessons later, Every right is of equal importance. We don't say this right is more important than another. They are all of equal importance. Duty bearers. Most of you know this already. Most of you know that duty bearers are people who have a responsibility to protect your rights. This means teachers, it's my job to help protect your rights. Social workers, doctors, nurses, police officers, even your parents are duty bearers. Now, I might nag my class quite a bit. I say, don't swing on your chair, don't run around the classroom, be careful with the scissors. And they might think, oh, Miss Foster is nagging us again. But the reason I'm nagging is because it's my job. I'm a duty bearer. I've got to make sure I protect everybody in my classroom from harm. And I'm out on the yard and I'm shouting instructions. My job to protect you all from harm when I'm looking after you. I'm on International Teaching Day, Miss, you did say that about teachers, didn't you? Teachers nag. Yes. Hands up who said that, the teachers are nags. That's our job, that's what we do. We do it, keep you safe. <laughs> we do it in the nicest possible way. We don't mean to be uh, whingy, but it's our job to tell you and to keep you safe. Okay. So, Sally Holland is another lady. Hands up if you're here to Sally Holland. 
my two uh, learning council. Right, well, the rest of you now, by the end of today, you will know who this lady is. This lady is the Children's Commissioner for Wales. She works for you. She doesn't work for me and Mr Phillips and Mr Richards and Mr Pankas. She works for you. Her job is to listen to what children in Wales think. To speak up for you. So she goes to important meetings and she will say, well, how does this work with children's rights? Are you making sure children are getting their right to play? Are you getting, making sure children get their right to relax? Are you making sure that children are getting the opportunity to be the best they can be? She will also talk about rights. If you go on any social media today, you might even see her on TV this evening, she will be talking and letting you know about your rights. And if there was anybody who didn't feel that they were being treated fairly and didn't feel that they were getting their rights, um, you could speak to Sally Holland, who you phone member is on the sheet below. Of course, you are very fortunate you've got lots of people in school who you can talk to if you needed any help or advice as well. We're all here to help you. So, to get our silver award, we've got our bronze and we needed to teach you about rights. To get our silver, we need to teach through rights. That means, a Lichard, we need to be showing you and you need to show us how we work together to treat people with dignity and respect. We encourage you to participate in things all the time, okay? By having work on the classrooms, we wanted you to make sure that you were accessing your rights to an education. We wanted to make sure you are participating. You've got your class stream, so if you needed any advice, you can ask your teachers, and that's also given you the opportunity to have your say. Some of you joined my learning council, Pupil Voice, Google Classroom over the holidays, and there's a little, you can't see it very well on here, but there were questions every week. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And it's your opportunity to give your opinion on matters concerning you. We've also got some photos up here of ways that we've taught you through rights, through our assemblies, um, by showing and demonstrating kindness, kind actions in our everyday teaching. The next big step is to think about how do we learn about rights around the world? How do we promote rights around the world? And we do this through lots of actions. Um, at the bottom here, you can see some of the children in the hall here when they were raising money for children in need. Last week, we were busy thinking about children around the world who don't have the same rights as us. Many of them don't have the opportunity to go to school. Some of them aren't living a lifestyle which means they're living to be the best they can be. Some of them don't have access to healthy food and water. And some of those children don't get access to good medical care. So we're thinking about others. We're thinking about what our actions we can take to help others around the world. We had an assembly before about uh, a school in Nepal. Unfortunately, the school was damaged in an earthquake. So we wrote to them and we were finding out about how are they managing to access their right to an education. And we told them that we have those rights and we told them about life in our school. We've also got a picture here of last Christmas, um, the Learning Council decided that they would like to collect food for the Gen Food Bank. They wanted to make sure that all children in the Gen were having access to healthy food over the Christmas period. So they kindly donated, children and staff kindly donated food. And you can see Lauren up in the top picture there, she went down to the Gen Council to donate food to the Gen Food Bank. We also teach you about current events. We look at first news and news rounds and we think about how children around the world get in their rights. And we talk in our lessons about what we can do to help those who aren't. So that's what I wanted to share with you. How far we are on our journey, what we need to do next and celebrate. You can see from those photos a lot of the work that's been done. Lots more has been going on but I could spend all day, as much as I'd like to, Mr Richards and Mr Phillips, know I love talking about rights. 
I could spend all day chatting to them. I tell you a good question you could ask, Miss, which I did last week, was for them to name some of the rights. Oh, and right. okay. It sort of tests as to what they know, and it amazed me with all the Yugos what they could remember. education and that has been really important this year especially with schools closed to make sure that if you're at home you've got the equipment you need to access an education good boy uh, the right to privacy the right to privacy good good the right to have a, house, a household over you what's that again uh, the right to have a household over you yeah that's right the right to shelter good girl Good. Clean food and water. Yep, yeah, you're right. Relax and play. Relax and play. Yep, yeah, that's another important one for you. Have you had to clean water? Yes, clean water. Every child has the right to, to be safe from abuse. Fantastic. Well done. Good rich. Right, so thank you for listening today. It's really lovely to come and see you all. Make sure you spread the word. Got posters up. Hi, Jacob. It's just started printing, and I think he's very busy today teaching all of you seven about their rights. So spread the word. These are your rights. They're important to you. Look, take a look. See which ones you think apply. Well, a big thank you to Mrs. Foster because I know behind the scenes, Mrs. Foster is constantly working, thinking of ideas like this assembly to get the teachers and get all the school, not just year six, but all the school involved in United Nations Church of the Child. And it's, quite, it's such a big school to get from nursery up to year six in a way that you understand, and I can see you understand lots. But one of the big things is in about the rights of the child, but you also, what is the rights of the child? It's not just the rights of the child, what we've got to do as bearers, but you've got rights to one another too. So when somebody needs to be kept safely, it's not just our job to make sure that you're safe. It's also your job to make sure that your friends or other children in the school are safe and respected and looked after too. So it's not just our job as the bearers. Well, that's what came through. Job. That's what came through. So in the tolerance assemblies, and I mentioned that in the YouTube video. We'll show that in a bit. These children, they know their rights, but they also know how to treat one another. And that was very apparent, I tell you. It's wonderful now. to hear the language as well, the children explaining. I've heard, especially in year three this year, I've heard children say, excuse me, don't do that, I've got the right to be protected from harm. And I've heard somebody say, don't disturb me while I'm working, I've got the right to an education. So to be using that language is really powerful. And it's really, it's really sending your message across don't do that because it's annoying, but don't do that. I have the right. Please don't disturb me. But like Mr. Phillips says, you've all got that responsibility as well to show rights and respect to other people. Okay, so we come to the end of the assembly. Hope the children in the classes have taken everything in. A lot of information there, but again, you can go back and there's some slides there that Mrs. Foster's put on. So you can look at some more information and there's a little video there as well that you can access to have a look to see more about this today or perhaps next week. So it's the poor weather today to make sure in the classrooms that you keep yourself safe and you can hear the and you're tolerant. It'd be an ideal time, sir, wet play for children to have a bash at that poster, really, wouldn't it? It'd be nice to see, especially year six with all their high-end art skills. Maybe they can redesign that poster so we can get some of those around the school. The Shemai posters which we've seen around the school, are absolutely fantastic. They appeared on my, on my uh, door, on Mr Phillips' door, this example there. So maybe we can see some of those. Year six, who's up for some posters today? There we go. Hopefully we can see some of that. Do you want to wave to the other children in the other classroom, say bye-bye? And I'm going to put this on YouTube, and your parents will see this as well. So pull a, pull a funny face, pull a nice face. Dion, well done.